Today I'm going to show you how to stop the particles movement when they hit an object using simulation nodes in Blender. So let's see. So let's start going to geometry nodes, creating a simple setup. And let's use a point, a single point. And let's animate it frame by frame using simulation zone. So let's get it here in the input and this in the output. Now we have a single point, as you can see. And let's try to move it, for example, in this axis, in positive x. So let's create an initial velocity before simulation zone with store name attribute. We want to create a vector. And let's call it velocity. And for example, I want in positive x. So I'm going to select 0 0.1. And this will be the initial velocity. Now we don't have any set position, so if we press play, nothing happens because we are not using this vector. So to use this vector, let's use set position and let's bring name attribute to use this attribute that we create, this vector. So you can copy this and paste it here and connect it in offset. So now in set position, we are saying use this vector that we create. So if we press play, we have this animation. Okay, now what I want is to add an object here and say to this velocity, to this attribute, A, change, update the velocity if you hit some object in the middle of this vector. So first of all, we need an object. Let's use, for example, a single plane. Let's move it in X here and let's rotate it, for example, in the axis Y. Something like this. Let's come back here. I'm going to lock this. And we need to use this information, right? Of this object. So, first of all, let's bring this object, object info, and let's select the object that we want to use, the plane, and select relative. So we will know the real time position. Okay, so now how we say if this hits this object, stop the velocity. To do this, we need to use this node super powerful Raycast. If you don't know how it works, I recommend you to watch my tutorial on my channel where I explain you how it works. But this node cast rays, so it project rays and needs a target. The target will be the object that we want to hit. So in this scenario is the plane. So here in target, let's connect this object. Okay. So now this is the object that is going to cast rays. When we connect this information, in the middle of this process because the point is the main protagonist. So we need to create a condition to update this velocity if there is a hit. So we are going to use a store name attribute and reuse the same attribute, right? So let's copy this and paste it here and select vector. So what we want basically is if this object now, if I press play, doesn't move because this is updating the initial velocity. So basically, right now I have 0, 0, 0. And if I press play, what matters is this one, not this one. For example, if I go minus negative and I press play, you can see it's going there. So more or less, I hope you understand how this works. But what we want is that, let me mute this. If this object hit this, then update this velocity. Okay, so let's come back at the start. And we need to create a condition, right? So let's use this. This is telling you if an object, the ray that is casting, is hitting an object. So it's a boolean. So let's use switch node and select the important vector. Okay. And let's connect it here. Look. So right now what is happening, if we press play, it doesn't move because we have 0, 0. But we can create a condition to say when this ray hits this object, have a velocity in true. If not, have another velocity. First of all, where is the ray? We cannot see the rays, but the ray direction, as you can see right now, is this one. Minus one because you can see it here and what we want 
is that the ray always follow the direction of the particle, so the velocity, right? This attribute that we are creating here, and we are going to update here. So we need to use this attribute, the velocity, is the direction. So first of all, connect. The velocity will be the ray direction. Okay, perfect. Now this is how long is the ray that is being cast from the original object. If we leave it in 100, then it's going to check the heat here, not when it's really close to the point. So what we want is to select something like 0 0.1 or use this vector and convert it in a float. Only selecting a vector math length. So if you select vector math length, basically it's converting this vector in a float. So the rain length will be always the same as the velocity. This always is the same setup to have the rate cast working perfectly. Okay, now it's working perfectly. And if we press play, nothing happens because we have 0, 0 in false and true. So what we want basically is that if this is not hitting, have this velocity. Actually, what we could do right now is if this is not hitting, for example, go up 0 0.1 because now it's not hitting. So if I press play, as you can see, the point is going up because this is updating this vector, this velocity. So this one is the final update of the attribute velocity. However, what we want, let's come back at the beginning, is that the ray that is casting this point that is really short, is shorter than this arrow, if it's not hitting this object, then what we want is to maintain this velocity, right? So we need to use the same name attribute. So let's move this and let's make a copy of this and connect it here. So if there is not hit, then it's false, then please follow the initial velocity. However, if the hit is true, then we don't have to connect nothing here because we are saying when it's true, when there is hit, the velocity will be zero, zero, zero. So when it's a hit, it will update this attribute that is being sent here, and that means that will stop. Let's check it. Boom, it stops. So as you can see, this is how we stop particles when they hit an object. You can see if I move this, it's not going to stop. But at the moment, that I'm putting this in the middle, it stops. Because the rule is really simple. We have a ray cast that is casting rays with this point, and if the ray hits an object, then stop the velocity. If the ray doesn't hit an object, then maintain the velocity that we created at the start, the initial velocity that is this one. I just add some frames with colors and notes, so you can see what is doing every node. This group of nodes is just casting rays from the points. And this boolean is just checking if a ray hits an object, then velocity equal zero. If not, will be the normal velocity. And now I just change the plane for this object, for the Susan, and I'm going to add more points in real time to see how it works. So what we can do is to move this. And let's add here join geometry. Let's disconnect this and connect it here. And what I want is to spread points in different directions. So let's change the initial velocity, for example, using random, random value. And let's select something like, let me think one moment, actually to do it fast, I'm going to mix two vectors, this one and vector math at and let me think one moment. So right now, let me push this, for example, something like this. And what I want is to change the vector for every new point, every frame. Let me check, okay. And I want to decrease the force of this vector because I want this to be more important. So I'm going to decrease the scale of this one 
with a scale and do it really, really, really short. And let's see how it works. Okay, we can decrease the force of this one, as you can see, and this one will be something like that. So basically what I'm doing is that the initial velocity have this vector and this vector. That is random, but I'm saying be really, really, really low. And this vector that we are adding will be stronger because the number is higher than the multiplication of this one by this one. So let me add this here and this here. Let me push this a little bit. And now, as you can see, the important thing is that the points are stopping there. I don't know why it's stopping here. Oh, yeah, sure. Because I didn't update this. So let me select Susan. And now it should work. Let's see if the points stop with this object. One, two, three. As you can see, they stop when they hit the Susan. We can start again. And let me move this here. Okay, let me restart again. And now if I move this, they're stopping when there is a hit. As you can see here. Actually, I could stop. Okay, the perspective isn't working. Sorry for that. Let me move this in front of the points. Now you can see that most of the points are being stopped right there. So this is how it works, as you can see, it's not really complicated. You only have to understand how Raycast works and how to create conditions. So I'll start playing with this. The more you learn about simulation nodes, later what you can do is to create, for example, a condition that if an object hits or stops another object, then change the object for another, for example, for an explosion or something. So if you want to learn how to do this and more techniques, I recommend you to subscribe, to give a like, and remember, you can donate this project and many more on my Patreon. And see you in the next tutorial.